Hi everybody, this is Pulkit Chabda. In this video, we'll be discussing the next problem of Code Forces Educational Round 87, which is C2 not so uh, simple polygon embedding. This is actually, uh, I don't know, is it just me or maybe uh, other people as well, but I've actually found it, found this problem to be harder than the D problem multi subset. Even the rating value is higher than D. Uh, it is 2000 for this one and 1900 for this one. Okay, anyway, let's just start and read, out, read the problem out. Uh, the problem statement is same as C1. Uh, okay, the only difference is that in C1 n is always even and in C2 n is always odd. You can check the C1, uh, C1's video first if you want to. It is, it is, an, it is a relatively easier problem. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, we'll just continue. You are given a regular polygon with two vertices. Uh, it's convex and has equal sides and equal angles and all its sides have length 1. Let's name it at 1 1. Your task is to find the square of the minimum size such that you can embed that 2 and gone in the square. Uh, by embedding, what do they mean? You can read this out, you can pause and read this out, okay? Uh, it is given that we can rotate the 2 and gone or also we can also uh, rotate the square. We will be given several test cases and for each test case we will be given an odd integer n and uh, we have to uh, tell the smallest side of the you know square in which the twin one can be embedded and the absolute difference should not be greater than 10 to the power minus 6 okay so this was it for the question part i hope it's clear i'll be discussing the solution first and i strongly recommend you guys to watch c1 plus if you haven't already it will help you uh, in understanding the concept better okay so yeah let's move to it uh unlike the c11 uh, you know the solution in c1 uh, we can see uh, if you remember in that we had you know four sides that were parallel to the sides of the uh, square two were horizontal and two were uh, vertical uh, let me just draw one of the cases quickly this was a case for an octagon and it looked something like this where these four sides are parallel to the sides and it fits perfectly into the uh, square but if we basically try to make two sides uh, okay i'm sorry I yeah if we try to make two sides parallel uh, the other two are basically points not actually sides because the value of you know uh, n is odd uh, we can also even check for okay it will be hard for me to draw i was actually trying to draw a uh, 10 gone anyway so it, it actually seems that there is some you know ununiformity uh, non-uniformity there is something not symmetrical here because we can see that there is nothing left in the top and the bottom section it is completely you know filled up but there is some space still left in left and right uh, this is how it will actually look if you try to draw the square across the you know hexagon in this manner so to make it more symmetrical by, by symmetry that's what i am saying I, I can't really prove why will it be the case but if we if we draw it this way this way like uh, the sides the two of the sides are basically parallel to the you know uh, to, to the diagonal it will be the best case it seems to be the best case will continue to see how basically you know this uh, how we'll be calculating the uh, value of side assuming that this is the uh, you know best case scenario this is the optimal case and we'll be trying to calculate the side for this case so moving on what we'll be doing is we'll be actually calculating the components of each side in the horizontal i'll say this component for this one it will be something like this one okay for this side it will be something like this one and so on uh, we'll be calculating the components you know the x values of the components uh, you know x values of the uh, vertices in the components and uh, we'll just subtract the minimum value of x that we got from the maximum value and that will be our answer I hope the, the, the part, you know, the, the intuition part is somewhat clear, somewhat clear that what, what we are basically trying to do here. Now, uh, I'll just illustrate it. Now, the thing is that 
we actually know the angle of one of the sides we know that uh, two sides will be there which will be parallel to the diagonal and the diagonal will be having a 45 degree angle with one of the sides right one of the horizontal sides let's make it this way only so let's we know that this angle is going to be equal to pi by 4 right now if we basically you know uh, somehow calculate this theta angle or uh, you know this delta angle will be knowing that you know if if hey if the, if the you know si if the angle of the first side with horizontal was pi by 4 the angle of the second side will be pi by 4 minus delta so the third side it will be pi by 4 minus 2 delta and so on right we'll know the angle at each case we'll, be, we'll just keep subtracting delta uh, from the previous angle and uh, in the initial stage we'll take the angle as 0 Oh, sorry we'll take the angle as pi by 4 also if we label the you know x coordinates we know that if if the x coordinate of this uh, basically you know if i make coordinates in such a way that this is x axis and this is y axis if i say that this leftmost uh, not exactly leftmost the uh, the coordinate of the you know left side of this side is let's say 0 then uh, this will be 1 by root 2 right because I know that this, this angle is uh, pi by 4 and this is 1 so the just next angle uh, the just next x coordinate uh, is going to be basically uh, 0, 0.0 plus cos of pi by 4 right let's say if this wasn't 0 and if this was some general x and this wasn't pi by 4 and it was some general you know theta then our next coordinate would have been x plus cos theta Right? because the side is 1 the current angle is uh, uh, the current coordinate is x and will uh, and, and the you know component of this side on x is going to be cos theta so we just add cos theta to x we'll get the next coordinate we'll be doing this for all of the n sides you know for all of the n sides we'll be calculating the uh, you know uh, the x coordinates of each of the vertices uh, we assume that one of the coordinates to be zero that doesn't really matter uh, but we assume to be zero because that's just fixing the origin we are not actually uh, you know interested in the absolute values we are just interested in the, uh, in the difference of maximum x value and minimum x value because that's going to be our side right the maximum x value which a uh, you know which one of the vertices takes will be corresponding to the one that the uh, rightmost uh, you know vertical side will have and the lowest x coordinate that any of the vertices take will be corresponding to the left uh, you know vert vert uh, vertical side of the square so if we just take the difference of the both two both of the them then uh, we'll have the side of the square right so this is how i'm going to proceed now the thing that we are left with is that what is this delta going to be okay i'll just consider any general to n gone and not just hexagon uh, let's say this is the these are two uh, you know adjacent sides now what we know is that this interior angle is pi into n minus 2 by 2 uh, n minus 2 by n sorry n, by, n minus 2 by n where n is the side of the uh, side of the you know uh, polygon but in this case we know that the size is not actually n it's 2n so let's just say 2n minus 2 by 2n so we can take this uh, you know 2 common out and we'll have pi into n minus 1 by n right so this internal angle is pi into n minus 1 by n where n is the input that we are getting okay so this delta interior uh, you know the difference in angle that this delta is going to be pi minus this angle right because this we know is a straight line this this was the straight line that we extended we wanted to see what is the difference in angle so it will be pi minus this value so uh, so it will basically 1 minus n minus 1 by n into pi which is equal to pi by n so this delta value is going to be pi by n right so we know the value of delta we know that the initial angle is pi by 4 and we know we'll be assuming that the initial x coordinate is 0 you can assume it to be anything that you want it to be uh, the, that will not impact the answer then what we'll be doing is we'll be iterating two n times because there are two n number of sides and for each of one of them will be uh, because sorry uh, because there are two n number of vertices for each 
for uh, for each of the vertices we'll be calculating its x coordinate and uh, we'll be just taking max we'll be just keep uh, we'll just keep track taking track of the uh, you know maximum x value so far and the minimum x value so far and finally the difference is going to be our answer okay okay now we'll try and implement what we just discussed let me copy the test cases so first thing will be the number of test cases then we'll have n okay now i'll also need the value of pi let's say we'll search it here pi value it is this one okay we'll have double pi equals to this and uh, i know that my current angle let's say is equals to pi by 4 right and i know okay i made a mistake it's not actually int it's double and my delta is pi by n right that's what we discussed right let me just see yeah it's pi by n and uh, let's say my double x value is 0, 0.0 and the minimum value also let's say it's zero for now because one of the possible values can be zero uh, and let's say the maximum value is also zero so we'll, we'll what we'll be doing is have a loop two n times okay we'll say x equals to x plus cos of current angle that's what we discussed right that the x coordinate will become x plus cos theta so current angle is basically theta i just replace the theta as well so x equals to x plus theta and we'll also change the theta value for the next you know uh, side so theta will become theta minus theta will become theta minus delta why minus and not plus because you can see that initially the angle was pi by 4 and it is decreasing by delta right okay so uh, it will become theta equals to theta minus delta and what we'll be doing is we'll say max mx equals to max of x comma mx and mn equals to min of x comma mn okay so yeah do this to n minus uh, do this to n times because to n number of vertices is all we have and uh, uh, let's also once have a look at the time complexity it will work because n can be up to 200 only so 2n can be up to 400 uh, precisely 398 and 200 times 398 is going to work so my answer equals to answer equals to mx minus mn i just print the answer i just set the position as well because we want the answer uh, you know relative error to be less than or equal to n raised to power minus x i have actually defined p as x y as this so let's check the answer 1.93185 okay seems to be the right one in all three cases okay so let's just try and submit it yeah it works I hope the solution is clear. I know it is a diff, uh, it is a bit different than what is stated in the uh, you know mentioned in the tutorial. I actually found this one to be more easier and uh, and easy to explain. So that is why I chose this one. So this was it for this video, guys. See you guys in the next one. Till then, bye bye.